That's gonna be so funny. This is a video about the effects of World War One. The first effect of World War I was that it created a lot of jobs. In munitions factories, women were hired in large numbers. Women were also hired to fill in for jobs that were typically filled by men. They became police officers, conductors, postal workers, and more. This was a big effect because it opened up a lot of jobs to both men and women after the war. The flu epidemic of 1918, also known as Spanish flu or la gripe, killed 10 times as many people than World War I itself did. The flu spotted up in various places around the world before making its way to war zones. Soldiers could contract the flu from one another while in contact with each other. An interesting fact is that while escaping rope, children would often sing, I had a little bird, its name was Enza. I opened in the window an influenza. Germany's surrender came in 1918 when they planned a special forces attack called the German Spring Offense, which would hopefully win them the war. Despite being successful, this attack lost some of Germany's best soldiers. The British blockade on Germany kept a lot of food out and the country's harvest did not provide enough food for the starving Germans. On November 11, 1918, Germany signed an armistice that ended the Great War. November 11th became Armistice Day to honor World War I veterans, but it was later renamed Veterans Day. On January 8, 1918, President Woodrow Wilson announced his 14 points for international peace after the war. He wanted to do away with alliances between nations, which were a cause of World War I. Wilson pushed for an international governing system, especially at the Paris Peace Conference which he believed was more practical for achieving world peace. His 14 points also outlined European territorial problems and assured American diplomacy and ideals after the war. During the Paris Peace Conference, President Woodrow Wilson explained his 14 points for world peace. Many leaders disagreed and wanted Germany to pay for their actions during the war. The Treaty of Versailles was signed on June 28, 1919 and wanted Germany to disarm, make territorial concessions, pay reparations to the Allied powers, and to accept direct blame for the war. The League of Nations was formed on January 20th, 1920. There were 42 nations to begin with, although the U.S. was not one of them, despite President Wilson pitching the original idea. Geneva, Switzerland became its headquarters. The League had three ways of solving problems between nations. Firstly, they would have the two countries that were having problems discuss its issues. Secondly, they would place economic sanctions on the country, making it more difficult to trade with the country. Nations within the League would boycott any countries with economic sanctions. The final solution was to use military force, but the League didn't have a military, so it wasn't a threat. The League's strategies began to fail, and the country stopped following rules, then dropped out of the League. We believe that the most important effect of World War I was Wilson's 14 points. His 14 points were influential in forming the Treaty of Versailles, although many world, leader, world leaders disagreed with them. Wilson's 14 points also encouraged an international governing system, which included large and small nations to assure political independence and do away with imperialism. The product of this was the League of Nations, which didn't last long, but after World War II, the United Nations was born, which is much more successful. These are our sources, and thank you for listening, and we hope you learned something new.